Okay, back with another outfit change um, because I'm gonna be honest, uh, this is a different day because shit got a little bit out of hand. It's okay though. It's it's fine. Um, obviously we know that I struggle with mental health issues and it's very real. It's not just on the internet. Sometimes in my personal life, shit happens. Um, I had a little bit of a, a little bit of an episode and it's we're we're back on track. We're back. It's fine. Did I did rip the doors off the wardrobe though? So uh, <laughs> putting the clothes away. Bit of an issue, but we're, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold them and let me worry about that, okay? Because hopefully you've got doors on your wardrobe still, fingers crossed. So I'm gonna fold them with you. Um, I'll leave the rest up to you because I am a little bit embarrassed, I'll be honest. All right, um, so let's just let's just start folding shit. Some of these are new that I've bought. Um, it does concern me a little when I buy things online and they come with these like sanitary things in them. Um, because I'm like, who's, who's been trying them on? You know what I mean? Anyway. Time to take my meds. I talked about this on TikTok. I've got this little um, pill container that tells you the last time you opened it. Because I have to take these like multiple times a day for, for the old ADHD. So... So half the time... I, oh, how old was that water? As you can tell, shit's gotten messy again. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, um, I always forget, like, if I'm like, did I just think about taking my meds or did I actually take them? So now I've got this that tells me, oh, okay, I took it like two hours ago. But sometimes I get confused and I'm like, I, I know I took one, but was it like one hour ago or was it five hours ago? I can't remember. So now I've got this. Actually, I'm going to fold these in little piles. I know you can't really see because guess who also left their tripod at the laundromat? Things are really going excellent for me. It's okay though. Did I wash this? Mm. We're off to a good start. I these aren't all. These are literally not for like tips for doing your laundry. I know shit is like, so chaotic in these videos. Um, it's just so you have company. Just so you have someone doing it with you. Because I know it's it's annoying and you don't want to do it. I get it. So that's why I'm doing it with you. Because if I also learned from my last video, this is called body doubling, and it's actually really helpful for people with ADHD. And I didn't realize there was a name for this. I've always known that doing stuff with people made it a lot easier for me, but um, I didn't know there was a, a name for it. I don't remember what I was talking about. I had to. I was talking about my ADHD meds, I think. The, I don't know. This brain. This range, she's going through it. This, there's, there's some shit going down. It's fine though. I feel like I said that a lot in the last video. I kept being like, it's fine. It really is though. I mean, sometimes, sometimes my mental illness and the things that I struggle with. Excuse me. Sometimes my mental illness and the things I struggle with do, they do. It does hurt other people sometimes. Like it can mean that I lash out at people I care about, people I love. It can mean that I break my belongings. <laughs> I broke my phone. I had to go buy a new one, so that was that was really fun. Um, and it's it's not okay. I don't like to excuse or glamorize. Like I'm laughing about it and trying to be lighthearted, but it really does make me very sad. I don't like treating people I love that way. I don't like raising my voice and getting angry and yelling and having these you know moments. I'm lucky that the people that love me and care about me, um, you know don't mind. Well, I mean, I'm sure they mind, but like they know that it's not me and it's just that I'm unwell. But I do get really upset because it does make you feel like a bad person. It makes you think like, like oh my god, I'm just so nasty. Like, I'm just mean. Like, because I get so like overwhelmed and it makes you lash out at people that you wouldn't normally lash out at. Well, I wouldn't normally lash out at anyone really, especially the people I love. So it really sucks, but you know, it's just something that I have to work on. Something that I have to get help for. And that's what I'm doing. So, minor setback, <laughs> minor fucking destruction. It's it's okay though. It's a new day. I'm gonna work on it. I've I made them a cake. My manager, and my boyfriend, I made them a cake that said "Sorry for being a crazy bitch." And I, they forget me. Luckily, thank God. I'm very lucky that they care a lot about me in the way that they do and tolerate these moments. Um, 
I am very lucky. I haven't even been paying attention to my pals. That's pants. These giant underwear, you probably just saw me folding them. They, I was doing a BuzzFeed interview and they had like a team come to my hotel room with like to bring a ring light and a camera and like, and they had to have the, cause it was over Zoom cause of the pandemic obviously, but they had like the laptop, they had to like bring all the stuff to my hotel to set it up, like my management team. And like, I had this little dress on that I was wearing and I had to do two interviews that day. One was with BuzzFeed and the other one was with Amuse Media and I didn't realise I was going to be like, it was going to be like a full body situation and I was like, oh my god, I don't have underwear and they're going to be here any minute. I didn't, I don't know, I packed for, this is what I mean, like the ADHD in me, I packed for a trip for a week where I was going to be doing interviews and talking to people and I didn't bring underwear, like not a single pair, like, Jesus Christ. Anyway, so I had to like quickly run down and go buy some and they were like those packet undies and I was like, it said briefs. I obviously didn't read it properly and so I grabbed them and I was like oh these are like these are massive these are like full body briefs they're like from here like down to you know the bottom of my ass cheek so I was like okay well I'm wearing a, like a tiny little skin tight silk dress like a little slip and I've got these big bulky granny undies underneath fucking hell so so when it came to the the AMUs interview like where I had to sit there and like be full body I was just like look I'm just gonna not wear them but then they got me on the ground like sitting like this on the ground speaking of I should probably make sure my bits are covered um it was actually this dress right here would you look at that so they have it's like short and it's really tight when it's on and it's like this kind of like silky material so it's like you you can't wear like big bulky underwear under it but I so I was like well I just I'll just go without but then they had me sitting on the floor like this like playing with a dog so I had to like have the, a little like loincloth situation going like a little flap and I couldn't tell anyone obviously I couldn't be like by the way, heads up everyone, no knickers. Like, how embarrassing. So, I just went without. So if you see that, just know that I'm sitting there in an awkward position because I am trying to not have have a wardrobe malfunction. And then they brought a dog out. They brought a dog. They're like, now this is a soft but serious thing. We're gonna have a dog. I'm like, a dog, excellent. Because, you know, they love to sit still. So it was running around and I'm like trying to keep it in my lap. And so I'm like, hello, you're gonna make me flash everyone. It was a, it was a thing. It was a moment. I don't know what music I'm gonna put over this because I got copyright claimed like two seconds after the last one. I was like, I kind of knew I was going to though because I knew the music wasn't like, you know, royalty free. But I was like, oh, it's pretty quiet. <laughs> I was like, maybe I'll get away with it. They got me like two seconds after it uploaded. So, whatever you're listening to now is whatever royalty free music I could find, my bad. This is a five sauce match. My manager Adam used to manage Five Seconds of Summer. He actually discovered them and managed them when they first started. He got to tour with them in One Direction and everything. Really, really cool stuff. So, that's my little subtle brag. Subtle, not so subtle. This is meant to be... Man. I'm already overwhelmed. Whatever. <laughs> it's so weird. I am doing this with you. If you're overwhelmed, me too, bitch. But we're in this together. Don't fucking bitch out on me. I know it's annoying. I know you don't want I know you'd rather be doing anything else, but it's gotta be done. Sometimes. But not all of it. You hopefully you won't have as much as this, because this is quite a bit. But if you do, that's totally fine. Because I do as well. So at least you got some company. I watched the the latest Frenemies episode last night. I was fucking crying. That shit was so fucking funny. It went <laughs> When Trisha was like, post was it on Instagram or Twitter or something where she posted like, um, like the ingredients for a grilled cheese so that Ethan would get the hint that she wanted to make grilled cheese. Oh my god, that sent me. What a funny bitch. This is what I was wearing at the laundromat, and honestly, it's not clean, but we're gonna fold it anyway. I only wore it once. 
whatever. Everything doesn't have to be perfect and clean. You can be a little bit stinky sometimes, it's fine. God. I was wearing that and in a TikTok someone commented and they're like, why do you dress like a toddler? I was like, I don't know Linda, why do you let your toddler dress like a slutty little TikToker? <laughs> How about that? I don't think I dress like a toddler. I think it's the colours. It's like very pastel and also because it's like a little pinafore, I guess that's a bit, a bit childlike, but overall I don't think I dress like a toddler. We took marbles to the beach today. I got him this little like floaty life jacket. It's so fucking cute. I got it for his birthday for him. I got him all these birthday presents and one of them was his little um one of them was his little life jacket and I had him go in the water with it because he gets a little bit nervous in the water. Poor little baby. He gets a bit nervous and I think it's because he can't really keep his little head above the water. He's really small. And well he's not really small, but he's like a small dog. But yeah, I got him a life jacket and we put him in the water today with it. And I don't know if he loved it, but he didn't hate it. Oh, he might have, I don't know. <laughs> Couldn't ask him. But he didn't seem too stressed. He wasn't shaking, which is good. Usually he shakes when he has to go near the water. Because we live right on the beach, so we take marbles down there all the time. But it was so cute. I had a good time at least. See, more of these giant knickers. This is... This is what I'd be wearing under my little <laughs> skimpy outfits. What is this? What the hell is this? Did I pick up something from the laundromat? Cause this is not mine and I've never seen Tom wear that. Okay. I'm just grabbing socks and just chucking them in there. I'm like folding them in half and I'm like, that's folded. <laughs> if I find the pairs to them, I'll pair them up, but... You look, I'm hoping you're not here for like laundry tips because really I haven't got any. And last time, like, with the room cleaning one, I got a lot of comments, people giving me like tips. They're like, oh, try doing this instead and this. And I'm like, look, I'm sure that would have been a lot more efficient, but I'm just trying to get this shit done. Like, I'm not really worried about the methods and what is more efficient. Do you know what I mean? I probably should because I'd get it done a lot quicker and have <laughs> way less harder time. So if you do have little helpful tips, leave them in the comments and I'm sure people can, and I'll pin some of them if people want to, people want some tips they can go through for themselves if they actually want to get this done properly. Um, this is my old merch. It says I don't behave correctly with a CD because um, I had a CD wall in my old bedroom and that was like kind of my whole brand for a while there. That's why I've got this CD tattoo is I've stuck all these CDs up and then because I thought it was going to be like cool and like retro and look all cool, 90s, 2000s, whatever and then I got like halfway through I'm like this wall is kind of big <laughs> and I've already gone through like 150 CDs and it just was like half of like the top half of my wall and then they all started falling down like as I was sticking them up and I was like oh this is a disaster so I just gave up and so they were just always falling down it was like a patchy mess it was very abstract and I used to get comments all the time, people being like, please, I cannot fucking look at this. <laughs> They're like, I can't look at this wall, like, fix the CDs, please. And I was like, well, no. I like it like that, okay? That's what you're gonna do. When someone, like, gives you shit about something that wasn't intentional, just didn't turn out the way you wanted it, just be like, well, that's how I want it. And then they're like, wow, okay, they're very forward thinking and innovative and creative. Wow, an artist. And you go, yeah, you wouldn't have thought of that. You wouldn't have thought of sticking 150 CDs up all willy-nilly, just pat tune falling off the wall, would you? Exactly. This is such a chaotic video because the laundromat was so loud, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to use any of that footage. <laughs> so I know this is probably less of a relaxing video, more of an anxiety-inducing video, but whatever. I don't even fold these clothes. I don't even like put them. Oh, I'll do it this time. I'll do it for you. I don't usually put them the right way around before folding them because, like, who cares? I'm just going to put them on my body again. Like, 
who am I making them look good for? You know what I mean? Because I'm not looking at them. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and you can just, I just like chuck my socks and my underwear like in the one drawer. And like, that's good enough for me. I don't need to like fold them and make them neat. I feel like I'm the anti version of that. Who's that girl? Was it Marie? Marie Kondo? I don't know. I'm getting that so wrong probably. The girl that's like does all the organizing videos and she had that Netflix thing. I feel like I'm the anti version of her because like, I'm like, just chuck it wherever. Just shove it in drawers. Just put them away. Don't even finish it. Just do some of it. Do what you can. Because like, realistically, sometimes that's all people can do. That's all I can do sometimes. Because. Like I said, your value isn't based on your productivity and how many chores you can get done and how neat you are. You have so much more to offer than that. You have so much more to offer than a clean house and clean laundry and folded clothes. And it's amazing if you can do that. And that's a lot of people were saying that in my last video that they were like, you know, this isn't something I struggle with. I'm actually very clean and you know, almost a little too clean. Like I'm very OCD about stuff, but. Um, it's like this was nice to watch and it made me feel a little bit more relaxed. It didn't, you know, it made me feel like, oh, you know, I don't have to be so, you know, anal about cleaning and being on top of stuff. So that was nice to read. I, re I read all the comments, by the way. I went through and read all of them because it made me so happy. I can't believe how positive the response was. It was amazing. I'm so glad people found it helpful. So, so glad. I'm doing a photo shoot soon for my new music coming out. I don't even know what I'm allowed to say about it at this point, but like everybody knows. <laughs> Everyone knows what song it is, and if you don't, um, sorry. <laughs> I think I'm allowed to say it, I don't know. Anyway, I've got a new song coming out at some point, and I'm doing a photo shoot for the single art, and the photographer was talking to me today. She was like, like sending me some concept ideas. She's like, oh, it'd be cool to get like a little dog to put in it. I'm like, I have just the dog. One here, this is Mr. Marbles. The sweetest baby! And everyone's like, oh, he's the only crusty white dog that we like. And I'm like, he's not crusty! And also, I love crusty white dogs. I think they get so much unnecessary hate. It's just because they're so common. Everyone, it's like, oh, every white girl named Jessica has a crusty white dog. It's like, yeah, because they're good family dogs. They're like, it's usually a multi shih tzu, and they get the little eye boogers, but like, not if you clean them and you like cut them, but and even if they do, it's just they breathe, they have tear stains, they can't help it. They're still the sweetest little baby. It's because they really are the best family dogs. They're so sweet and they love people. It's like they get so much unnecessary and they live forever. Those things are ancient and that's why sometimes they look a bit crusty, it's because they just don't die. Like they just live for so long. Which is what you want in a dog, you know? You want them to live a long, happy life. Cats, on the other hand, don't get me started on cats. Actually, just kidding, love them. I get so much hate for saying that I don't like cats. Someone even said that I'm like contributing to the murder and torture of cats by tweeting that I didn't like them. I was like, girl, hold up, take a deep breath. What? What the hell? Because, I mean, I get it. I like cats. I don't hate them. I just don't enjoy them as much as dogs. But so many people are like, people that hate cats have control issues or they, they're misogynist because cats are feminine. And I'm like, it's none of that. They just make me sneeze a lot and they just, we just don't vibe. I think I have dog energy and that's fine. So I vibe with dogs better. I don't have cat energy. Cats are too relaxed for me. You know, I'm, I'm, they're not as, they're not, and they're chaotic in like a frightening way. Like they're, they're relaxed until they're chaotic and the chaotic is scary for me. It's not like a fun chaotic, like it really scares me. Like they are so unpredictable. And I mean, maybe I'm just not good with cats because I can't read them very well. Cause like, I don't get it. Like I, sometimes they're really affectionate and they're like really friendly to you and you can like pat them and they're like really loving and affectionate and out of nowhere they'll just switch and start clawing at you and biting and you're like hey hey <laughs> whoa what the hell chill out 
and I don't know like I can't read when that switch happens or what I'm doing wrong. I know sometimes they get overstimulated or something but but like I can't tell when you're overstimulated. I don't know. Maybe I just need to spend more time with them I guess and read them better but like I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm severely allergic to them so I don't really have that opportunity to get close to them and figure them out. So I'm just going to stick with dogs. But we do have two cats that live here, but they're not mine. These are not my jeans, and Tom's legs are a lot longer than that, so I got a feeling I might have shrunk these. <laughs> Oopsie. Sorry, Tom. What if he was just cheating on me and I just gave him a way out? <laughs> what if I was just like, oh my god, I shrank his little skinny white jeans. But they weren't even his, it was some girls. And he's like, yeah, you shrunk them. He would never cheat on me though. You know how you just know. Like he... He didn't have the time to. <laughs> We're always together. And I don't think he wouldn't anyway, but... Even if he wanted to, I don't think he could. Nobody better come for me for how I'm folding shit. I just realised now, I've been folding these all kinds of whack. <laughs> Stop. I don't want to deal with the comments that are like, oh my god, watching her do this gave me so much anxiety. Like, listen, me doing it's giving me anxiety also, so don't worry about it. Join the club. Take your meds. Watch something else. Tuba some karaoke on that last time I suggested it and I got like maybe two comments being like yeah do it and everyone else was like <laughs> so I'm taking that as a green light to go ahead and start singing some tunes will I get copyrighted for that that would be an absolute stitch up Surely not. People do like covers on YouTube all the time. Let me just close my uh, two hour long sleep guided meditation. Meet your spirit guides while sleeping. <laughs> Sometimes they just autoplay and I end up in the weirdest like guided meditations. It's like, meet an alien. I'm like, I don't want to do that. That's a little bit too, a bit too much astro travel for me. I think I just want to go to sleep. One time I was listening to a guided meditation and I was so anxious and I was trying to fall asleep and it was like listen to the rustle in the bushes and I was like who's Russell? What song should we sing? What should I sing? You can sing it with me. No one's gonna hear ya. Who's singing Driver's License? I don't know if I know it well enough. Okay, I don't know if I know this well enough but I'll sing what I do know. Got my driver's license last week It's like we always talked about So you were so excited for me Finally drive up to your car But today I drove through the suburbs Crying as you were I don't know if that's the right melody I'm nervous now Stop listening You probably let that blonde go than me. Oh, I'm so far behind. Not today I drove through the stopping. How could I ever love someone else? You know we weren't perfect, but I've never felt this way for no one. And I just can't imagine how it could be so. Cause you didn't mean what you wrote in that song about me Cause you said forever now I drive alone past your street That's the only part I know 
It was, that was a bit of a sad one to pick, if I'm honest. I should have gone a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, that was a bit sad. What else is there? What's a more fun one? Christmas songs? Absolutely not. Let's just go on the karaoke channel and see what they got. Abba. It's a good love story by Taylor Swift. No, I said love story by Taylor Swift. Sorry, I had to check the camera was still on. She do it all in one breath. We're on the same label, by the way. I literally will not shut up about that. Anytime Taylor Swift or Ariana Grande, anyone is brought up, I'm like, same label. Hey, hi, bestie. <laughs> hey, Colleen. It's getting so old, everyone's thinking it. But I'm not. What are we up to? I feel better now. I like singing while I do things. It helps me just like, you know, not think about what I'm doing. Were you guys singing along with me? You should have been. Just fucking belt it. Who cares? I say as I sang that so softly. <laughs> sang it so quiet. I'm like, just belt it. I do it. I feel like I'm making good progress here. Oh my god. Does it turn out that something's not as hard as I made it out to be in my head? Wow. Would you believe it? I'm always doing that to myself. I'm always like, this is such an overwhelming task! And then I start doing it, I'm like, well, oh, not really. <laughs> this is actually not that bad. It's a good day, I'm learning. We're both learning. 
honestly I was kind of dreading doing this because I like to I like to watch things and like just I like to just have things distracting me. Like I said, I can't let a single thought occur, so I have to have constant, a constant feed of just noise and pollution to my brain. Um, and I can't do that when I make these, so it really sometimes is a little bit difficult. But this isn't so bad. I got to sing a couple of songs, have a little bit of a karaoke moment. I'm chatting away to no one. <laughs> Well, I still feel like I'm talking to people. Like, you know, I imagine that there's a back and forth. I imagine that you're responding to me. I think of the answers in my head. I'm just having a full conversation. Is Don't they say that's like the first sign of losing your mind? I mean, I lost. I had many signs. Many red flags have happened before this one. I once sought somebody. Some. I once sought somebody. Why have I got a lisp? I thought. I once thought. Somebody, goodness me, as I'm talking about red flags about my brain deteriorating, um, I once thought somebody hacked into my smoke alarm because it was beeping every now and then. And don't get me wrong, I actually knew that that does mean that the battery's low. I've heard that before, like it's not like this was the first time and I was like, what's that noise? Is someone, you know, like I genuinely knew that that's, that meant low battery, but in my, in that mental state that I was in, when I was having this insane manic episode, I because there was many other things happening in in sequence to that, so I was like, someone's hacked into it. Somebody's hacked into your smoke alarm, you reckon, love? Like, <laughs> what are they gonna do? Be like, oh, a fire? No, oh, just kidding. Like, God, I was really not with it. I was taking a lot of behavioural meds, and <laughs> they really do a number on you after a while. And because like, and there was bird shit on my driveway. And I like panicked and was like, oh my god, they're spray painting my house, like they're marking my driveway. Not the birds, but like people. God. It's funny now though. <laughs> Cause like, you know, sometimes you have to laugh at it. It's as long as you're not still out of touch with reality and struggling a little bit, it can be funny. At the time it's terrifying and it's not pleasant at all, but when you're all good again, it's like, oh that was a bit that was a bit quirky, that was a bit funny. And I try not to glamorize mental illness. A lot of people, like, I think earlier on in my TikTok, people used to comment things like that. They'd be like, oh, I really don't like how she glamorizes, you know, oh, I'm so crazy, oh, you know, psychosis. Like, but I'm not glamorizing it. Like, I think anyone that watches that doesn't go, oh, that sounds really fun. Like, I think they're more like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, oh, God. But at least it's not... It's also funny though, because then people can laugh along at it and they can be like, oh, you know what? And that is kind of funny. And she seems totally normal. Like, she seems, you know, I just put it in a way that's palatable for people so that, like, when you do meet someone who maybe does experience psychosis or, say, schizophrenia or manic episodes or things like that, you can be like, oh my god, they're like, they're not scary. They're not these, like, out of control nutcases. Like, they're totally normal people. They're just having a hard time. They're just a bit unwell. Like, they're just sick. And they're not always like that too, like sometimes we just have bad, like I'm not, I don't have schizophrenia but I have had psychosis before and sometimes it's like, you know, I'm not always like that, it's only happened to me, you know, a couple of times. And it's because I've got trauma and I've had, you know, a bit of a, a tough life and it's just what happens. And I think, yeah, I just don't want people to see that and be like, oh my god, people with psychosis are totally crazy and out of touch with reality and they're not, you know, lucid and people treat them like they're not even sentient they just like talk like they're just complete loonies who just have no idea what's but it's like they're really probably frightened like they're actually probably very scared and they're totally nice fun people when they're not struggling and so uh, that's all I'm trying to do I'm not trying to glamorize it I'm just trying to normalize it I think I think we've come a long way with normalizing things like anxiety and depression and I think there's still some things like this <laughs> where it's like you know it is, it can be really gross and messy sometimes. Um, and I think we're coming closer to normalizing that as well. But I think some of the other things, like some of the more less common mental illnesses or things that do involve some more intense themes, I guess, like things like hallucinations and delusions and stuff like that. I think we still have a bit of a way to go with that. But I think we've come a long way. I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with the progress we've made towards people with mental illness.
and I think it like it helps if if you like have a loved one or even like a partner or a friend or someone that is struggling with things like that too because then it helps you just like because you might never experience it but someone you care about might and it helps you be like oh okay I don't need to be scared of them and I don't need to you know treat like infant inf infantilize what's the word where you like almost like baby them I don't know I just want people to to feel a lot more normal because we are I mean, what is normal anyway? Tom's very good. Tom, my, my boyfriend, he's very good with my... He's actually doing a, a day course for um, partners and parents of people with BPD. Which I think is really, really sweet because I... You know, because me having those outbursts I think is a big part of that where I have... I kind of like switch and just have these freak outs and... Get a bit... Get a bit, you know, overwhelming. And he does his absolute best to try and deal with that because it's a lot. That's a lot to put on another person. Like it's a lot for me. It's a lot for me to try and deal with in my own head. Let alone another person who's not experiencing it and hasn't experienced it. Just seeing that and being like, oh my god, what the fuck do I do? Like, how do I calm her down? Um, so he's doing this course, and it's gonna. I think they guess they're just gonna like maybe explain it more. I'm not really sure what happens in the course, but. I think it'll be helpful either way, and I think it's really, really sweet that he's making the effort to do that for me, and I'm really, really, I'm so grateful for him. Here's more of my merch. I want to make more merch soon. I've just got to wait till this merch deal is over because <laughs> I think it lasts like six months or something, so. And then I signed with Republic, so I had to sign to a different, I don't know, just boring legal stuff. I still can't believe that I have a, a record deal. Like I, I'm so excited about it, and I want to talk about it all the time. But I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm bragging about it all the time. Like I joke brag about it, where I'm like, oh hey, hey colleague, like that kind of stuff. But like, I actually, because I'm just, I still so surreal. Like it doesn't even feel real. Like how am I signed to a record label and like Republic Records too, which is like one of the biggest labels in the world. And I'm like, what? What the fuck? Like. That was my dream my whole life. Like that was literally all I've ever wanted to do since I was a little kid. And then I remember like in 2019, I had this whiteboard and I was like, when I just learned about like manifesting and affirmations and stuff. And I was like, oh, you know, it can't hurt. So, and I was like, and I heard you have to, it's like about, I'm getting confused. It's like you need a, an important part of it is like showing gratitude for like what you already have. And as, and I actually was super grateful for everything because this when I just started getting a following on TikTok and I remember writing on my thing, I was like, I'm super, super grateful for, you know, all the love and support that I've already been shown. And I'm super grateful for all the success I already have with like my, my 50K <laughs> followers. I was like, I'm so excited and I'm so grateful. And I wrote on there, my ambitions was like, I, and I, knew, I felt so silly writing it because I was like, there's no way, I don't even know how to go about getting a record deal. And I had no music out that was like, I, had, I think I had Blondes out. Um, even that was a challenge to record that because I'm like, I don't know how to record music. I don't have any equipment. I don't have a studio in Australia because um, I recorded that in the States with my ex. I'm like, I can't get to America. I don't know any producers. I don't know how to make any music besides like write them and sing them. I can't even really play guitar. But I literally put on my thing. I was like, I will have a record deal by the end of 2020. And I was like... I felt so stupid writing it, I was like, oh my god, that's like, so shooting for the stars considering where I'm at right now, I was still stripping, I'd only just started getting a following on TikTok, and I don't think I'd even sang on TikTok yet, I was just posting like, funny videos, so I was just like, whatever, it kind of had to write it, you know, aim for the stars, um, whatever, but it actually happened, and I actually got a record deal by the end of 2020, and I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, me? What the heck? I was like, I still, every day, I'm like, how the hell did I finish that? Like, what the fuck? And now I have, like, a million followers on, on TikTok, and, like, and my songs have, like, millions of streams, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Literally, what the fuck? Like, I'm, like, almost suspicious at, like, how, how I pulled that off. Like, I, like, I'm insanely grateful, like, don't get me wrong. And this is what, what I mean, I, I hate, I don't ever want to brag about it, because trust me, like, I really am 
I'm so I try my best to be so humble about it because I I know where I came from like I came from the app like I was homeless at one point I really came from you know the shit end of it so I'm well aware of how extremely lucky I am but I also know that I worked hard for it too so I try not to I try not to beat myself up about it and be like how did I do this I'm like well I did you know work my whole life towards this and I've I spent years and years and years sitting in my room pouring my heart out and writing songs and and I spent and I used to post videos on Facebook I used to post videos on YouTube they probably come up in the recommended with my real name is shit but like uh, whatever <laughs> I don't love them and I don't like looking at it and I think I've come a long way since those but but they're out there um yeah I've always been trying to like push my songs and my music and sing and you know for years and years it went absolutely nowhere but I guess finally it paid off and it was worth it and I'm so 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 thankful I miss it thankful I don't have to strip anymore fingers crossed anyway <laughs> fingers crossed I don't have to go back to that and there's nothing wrong with it I talk about this a lot like on TikTok I, I talk about how like I'm like, oh, thank God, like, I got out of stripping and, like, you guys helped me do that so much. I wouldn't be able to do this without everyone supporting me the way that they do. But I don't want it to seem like I'm bashing sex work or that I'm saying stripping is bad or anything. Because it's absolutely not. But in my experience, it was really bad. Like, my experience with the industry was terrible. And it was really to no fault of anyone. Like, it wasn't like there was... There was some bad management in some of the clubs, but look... There was two clubs that I worked at. I worked at three or four in the end. I don't know. I kept getting fired. But um, the first two that I worked for, the management was fine. Like they were great. And they looked after the girls, um, and I loved the girls. Like that was the only thing that kept me there. Really was like the family of it all. Like the girls, like my sisters, they were so welcoming and so nice. And I felt like I finally had a community of people that like actually understood me, and they had similar experiences to mine. They had a similar lifestyle. They obviously did the same job, and it was like. It was like just going to work, or well, not even work, it was like going out every night with your best friends and just drinking and making money, but that can also come at a price and it can be a really toxic environment sometimes, especially the whole party culture of it all. Like, I was so naive going into it, like for a whole year of stripping, I just thought everyone was drunk. Like, I was just like, oh, we're all just drinking, ah, besties. I didn't realise people were all doing coke. Like, <laughs> it turns out everybody does coke, not even just strippers, everyone. Like, that's something I learned as an adult. Um, it took me literally like them doing it in front of me to be like oh that's what we're doing okay and I was just drinking <laughs> um but yeah so that it can be toxic and I think it doesn't have to be that way and not all places are and I'm not speaking for the entire industry this is just my experience in the clubs I worked at is it, it did get a bit like that and that wasn't even the worst part about it though like that wasn't even what stopped me doing it it was it was just more it was honestly it was the men that made it really difficult for me and some women in that industry are really really strong like they really can take on that stuff and they also have really firm boundaries for themselves and they're very good at putting their foot down and being like listen these are the rules these are my boundaries do not cross them and these are the consequences if you do but I was not very good at that and that ended up getting me hurt and in a lot of toxic situations and a lot of dangerous situations it happens a lot to baby strippers I think because when you first start you're really nervous so you drink a lot and you party and you just go a bit crazy and then you and also you're not really used to having to constantly tell people off and set boundaries for yourself at least for me I wasn't so and people take advantage of that a little bit so it takes a, a while to be like okay I see what I see how people are manipulating me now and I need to be careful and so that was my experience and I it was really toxic and I was assaulted a lot, I was hurt a lot, I had a lot of really shitty things happen to me, I had a lot of nasty things said to me and if you've got a really tough skin and you are very like firm in your boundaries and you can guarantee that you're gonna be, you know, safe, then I think it's it's a great option for some people but it's not, I think there's almost like a toxic positivity to stripping and sex work because I think we want to be empowered really badly and we're so like mad that we've been sexualized our whole lives as women that we so badly just want to take that back and be like well fuck you I'm making money off being hot now so you can sit there and pay for it and it's like it is empowering but I think there is also a lot of negative things about it that people don't talk about and I understand why it's like you don't want to 
you don't want to play into that whole stereotype of like, oh, we're all so sad and abused and we all have daddy issues and it's like, because it's not the truth. But it's a bit hard to balance talking about the positives while also addressing that there is a lot of negatives to it. So yeah, I don't know, that was just my experience in it and it really has had a lifelong, probably, I mean, I've only been out of it for almost a year. So maybe I'll recover, I don't know, but it really has had really lasting effects on my mental health and the way I, um, the way I see men really and the way I have intimate relationships with people. Um, it's made it really hard and, and that's something I didn't know would happen. I didn't know that it would affect my personal life and my intimate relationships that way. I thought it would just be like, you know, yeah, there's going to be shitty men at work, I'll deal with it and then I come home and I, that's, that's work and this is my real life. But after every single night dealing with the same bullshit, you start to be like, oh my god, it really is everyone. You're like, they all are like that. And they're not. And not all men are like that. And it's it's taken a long... And it's still, I'm still working on it. I'm still trying to see it in a different way. So there's a lot of work I've had to do because of that job. And it's, this is just my personal experience with it. I think because I have some of my best friends, like one of, one of my best friends, she loves it and she's been doing it like four or five, five years now, five or six, I don't know, a long time, since she turned 18, she said it's what she's always wanted to do, she couldn't wait to turn 18 and start doing it, and on her 18th birthday she went down to the strip club and um, she did, yeah, like, I think it was like on her birthday she went down there and got the job because like she's all she's ever wanted to do, and she still does it and she absolutely loves it, she works like six nights a week, like she's... She has no issue with it. She's like, yep, I love it. It's all I ever wanted to do. I'm so happy. This is my dream job. And it's awesome. She's happy and that's what she loves to do. And she can handle it. And and yeah, and like obviously she knows there's, you know, negatives to it. And she's had shitty experiences too. But it's worth it for her. It's like, that's something she can balance. And I just couldn't. And it, and it does worry me seeing like the huge boost with with OnlyFans and it's like I don't know I want to be careful talking about it because I do not want to I'm not I know this just sounded like one big rant against sex work but it's absolutely not I don't think sex work is bad at all I'm in full support of sex work and I think it can be an in, a super empowering and super um, amazing job for a lot of women and men but but I think just like any job though there's gonna be negative things to it and for me I found doing that job had significant negatives that I probably wouldn't have done the job knowing how it would affect me. I mean, I, I had to pretty much for survival, like I really had no other way to get by. And that's, I think maybe that's why I have a negative experience with it, is because it, was, it wasn't something that I was like excited to do. I wasn't like, oh, I love this, I want to do this. It was kind of like, you know, out of necessity, I was homeless, I was like, well, I guess I have to just do this now. And I ended up enjoying it. A lot, a lot of aspects of it I absolutely loved. I love performing, I love dressing up, I love doing the stages, I love the girls. I even loved the management at times. Um, I loved how flexible the job was. Obviously I loved the money, that was, it goes without saying. It just really is the actual emotional labour. That, and that's another thing I didn't realise it was either. It's not just like, you go to work, you get naked, you dance, you get tipped, you know, people say shitty things to you, whatever, you deal with it. It's like sometimes, it's hours and hours of sitting with customers while they tell you the most horrific, deepest, darkest parts of their life and you just have to know how to deal with that and like, and I don't. And so I would hear some things and be like, oh my god, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to deal with that. I don't really know what to do. And it's a lot of emotional labour that I did. And then I would come home like exhausted and it wasn't just from like, you know, dancing around. It's like I would be exhausted from sitting down in the same spot for five hours with one man having to keep a conversation going, having to be like, how do I keep this entertaining to keep him in the room and also how do I deal with the stuff that he's saying to me? And sometimes it's like they're really lonely and they, you know, they want you to see them outside of work and they're like, oh, I really think we have a connection and I really love you and you just like, it does feel kind of shitty sometimes. It feels like, like, man, like I am doing this because it's my job and, you know, it's, it's not that you don't give a shit about them, you're just like, oh, just give me your money and fuck off. It's kind of like, you really do start to feel for them and you're like, oh my god, this is kind of sad, but I also don't want to go home with them and I don't want to be their wife, so it's like, how do you how do you tell an old man who's, you know, 
had a stroke and he's got no family, his wife's dead. How do you tell him that, like, oh, I actually don't have feelings for you, but thanks for sitting with me for five hours and spending all your money. It's like... And then again, it's kind of on them because they have to understand that that's the job and it's an exchange, but there's a lot of it that's really emotionally draining that I didn't realise would be. So that's kind of all, I guess, all I want, like, especially younger people, like, people that are not 18 yet that are like, oh, I can't wait to do OnlyFans when I turn 18, I can't wait to be a stripper or I can't wait to do this, and it's like, you absolutely can do those things if you want to do them, but, and you might really love it and it might be the best job for you, but it also might have a really damaging effect on you as well. And any job will, but I think any job, usually you know about those negative things going into it and there's there's some things I just didn't know stripping I didn't know that it was going to be like that anyway that was a bit dark and sad my bad <laughs> did not mean for that to be fucking so deep but it's nice to be able to like just sit and talk about it though because I touch on it on TikTok but I only get a minute and it's like hard to actually verbalize in the right way because I have to be really careful because I don't I I do upset people sometimes because they're like they think I'm you know bashing sex work and that I'm saying how horrible it is when I'm really trying not to because I don't think it is horrible it just was horrible for me I'm just like repeating myself at this point sorry <laughs> But I'm almost done. I've made a, I've made a dent in it. I mean, I'm pretty much done anyway. I've got like, just this basket I think, and then I've got to s figure out where the fuck I'm gonna put them because I pulled all the drawers out of the wardrobe and ripped the doors off. Fucking idiot. shirt and I've never seen Tom wear this. This looks like a woman's shirt. Maybe it's Tom. He does wear a lot of girls clothes. Which I actually love. I love Tom's fashion. I wonder if you can even see me this whole time. Imagine if this is just piled up and I'm just like sitting here talking and you can't even see me. And this is when does Tom have a leopard print shirt? I'm hardly folding these honestly and I'm sure you can tell but as long as they're neat enough to go in the drawer that's all that matters because you're just gonna pull them out and put them on your body like it doesn't matter you can be untidy if you wanna be I imagine like parents probably feel a lot of guilt with stuff like this I don't think they should at all and I hope they don't but I imagine they probably would because like kids get so messy and especially you know having kids in the house they're so grubby they leave toys everywhere they leave food out they you have to wash so many of their clothes so often and I feel like it would get overwhelming and even if you don't struggle with mental illness I think even just that in itself would make you just be overwhelmed and be like oh my god I can't do this like I can't stay on top of all of this which I think is unfair to put that on parents that they have to like be on top of their kids you know, mess 24-7 and they have to have a display home constantly and their kids have to have everything completely clean all the time. It's like, who cares? They're kids. They're messy. Like, they're probably going to mess their clothes up in two seconds anyway if you wash them and fold them. So, like, just do what you can. Just give them a few clean outfits to wear until those get dirty and then and then wash those. You don't have to do their, all of their washing all at once and have all of their stuff neatly folded and hung away. Like, because I honestly don't think... I could handle that, like, I really worry about having kids, I'm like, oh my god, I'm probably gonna be so messy, because I am messy and it's just one of me, I couldn't imagine keeping on top of my shit and kids as well, that must be so hard. I'm 
almost done. I don't know if I should film myself putting them in the drawers, because one, I don't really want to show them, and the state that they're in, but I also want you to have someone to do that with. So I'm in a bit of a pickle. I met the nicest lady at the laundromat. I don't know if I'll be able to fit the footage in. I was recording when she came up to me, but she's obviously not in the footage because I don't want to just film strangers without them knowing, but... Um, and I don't know if you'll be able to hear her though, but she was so lovely. Like, she came up and was just like... Um, she was like, oh, you know, it's hot in here. If you want to, like, get a cold smoothie, this place down the road does a really good one. And she's so nice. And she's like, she's like, what are you doing? Do you mind if I ask? Because I had, like, a whole ring light and, like, a... Like a stand with the mic and she came up she's like do you mind if I ask what you're doing I'm like oh I film like YouTube videos and like self-care videos for people that struggle with their mental health and find it hard to do daily tasks so I like do it along with them in real time so they can oh my god what has happened here anyway um and she was like oh that's so cool she was like what's your YouTube and she was like actually I don't really know how to figure out YouTube um <laughs> she's like what's your Instagram I'll follow you there. And she's really, really nice. So if you found my YouTube, hello. This is a video that I was trying to do. But I had a cheeky meltdown and now it's days later and I'm doing this. I was going to play it off like it wasn't days later. I was going to like wear the same outfit and do the same hair and makeup to pretend like I didn't just like wait three days to finish this. But why bother? You know, why lie? May as well just be honest. People know I'm mentally ill. And it's fine. If we talk about it, it's it's okay. I got this mask, and everyone told me that the valves mean that they are not COVID safe. I'm like, well, why would they sell them to me then? So I don't wear it anymore. But because it's like not the valve on the inside. I don't know. I stopped wearing it when people told me that it wasn't. COVID safe, but I'm like, well, what's the point? Why would they sell it to me with a valve in it then? It's a bit silly. We've gone back to having to wear masks now in Sydney. Because we were all good for a bit. We had no no cases, or maybe like three. We had very minimal cases, so everything was back to normal. But then a couple old folks tested positive and went down to the RSL instead of waiting for their results back. I'm pretty sure I could be completely wrong in this. But this is what I heard, was that they they didn't wait for their test results before they went out to like a bunch of different places and it turned out it was positive. And so they'd just gone and spread it to a bunch of people and then we had a bit of a spike. But I think it's going back down to normal, but now we have to, now masks are mandatory in public and in Ubers and in shopping centers, as they should be. And it's good that over here, if you don't, then you get fined. Cause I know in America it's kind, of, they, it's kind of fucked up that they've just like left it up to the public to figure out. Like in America they're just like, you know, wear a mask but like, you know, <laughs> that's it. You're not going to get in trouble if you don't. So it's like they just are kind of going based on goodwill and hoping that people will just do the right thing. It's like, well people aren't like that. People aren't just going to, if you give them the option to not do something, they're not going to do it. So here it's like, you get fined if you don't, which I think is a good thing. And I feel bad that Americans have just been left to like fight each other. It's like. It shouldn't be, you know, the public telling the rest of the public to wear masks. It should be the government being like, you need to <laughs> wear a mask. I mean, they could be, honestly. I don't really know much about American politics based on just what I see from my friends in America and on TikTok. I really don't know the full depth of how it's being run over there. But I know some shit is going down. And I shit has hit the fan over there. So I'm really sorry if you're from America. <laughs> that shit looks rough. Okay, so that's all the clothes. I guess I'll just put them in drawers now. I'll film it. Come on then. Come on. Would you glide away with me? This is not going to be my cutest angle, but oh, who cares? You're not here to look at my angles. And if you are, you're weird. Why are you doing that? Mm, I I got a feeling these clothes are not going to fit. Okay, wow, well, I've put like four pairs of underwear in here and they already don't fit, so. That's a bit fun and fresh. I'm gonna 
gonna struggle with this, I think. This is. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Look, I know, just shh. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We're just shoving it in. God. I probably should have like separated mine and Tom's clothes. That was a bit dumb of me. These are just gonna get literally like yanked out when we're trying to find shit. Oh well. At this point, I'll just be shoving them in. At least they're clean, you know? At least they're clean. That's one thing that we can, we can be happy about. It might be a complete disaster in the drawers, but they will be clean when I pull them out onto the floor. Some of these could probably be hung up too and not shoved into a drawer, but oh dear, what's happened here? Oh no. Oh, I've broken the drawer, haven't I? Minor setback, I've broken the drawer. What I will do is actually just completely ignore that and I just won't worry about the drawer being broken and I'll pretend that it's not and it can stay shut for the rest of the time that it exists. And we've broken drawer number two. This is proving to be a lot more difficult than I expected it to be. What I think, maybe instead, is I will... Hmm. I've broken those ones too. <laughs> oh, well. We'll hang them up. No, I won't do that. That's going to take too long. I've already folded them, I don't want to hang them up. I'll put them in the drawers and just leave them open. How about that? Okay, that's as good as you're going to get from me. Um, I just had to put the rest in the broken drawers and I'm just going to have to go get some new furniture that isn't broken and that I will not break in the future. Um, but they're away and they're folded. I'm out of breath because it's hot! Anyway, if you did it along with me, I'm so, so proud of you. And if you couldn't do it along with me this time, I'm still super, super proud of you because I know that you're trying. And I know you probably wanted to do it too, but sometimes it's just, it, it's just too hard sometimes and that's totally fine. If you could even do a little bit of it, that's awesome. And if you could do none of it, totally fine as well. We're just people, we're just living. We just be living and eating and drinking and wearing clothes. It's, nothing matters. But thank you for spending this time with me and folding my clothes with me, letting me hang out with you. I really actually enjoyed that and it wasn't as overwhelming as I thought it was going to be. And just remember you're not lazy and you're not gross and your value isn't based on your productivity. So just remember that you're allowed to just live. You're allowed to just be a person and exist. So with that, I will see you next time. And remember, it's not always...